this lesson, we'll use two-axis pocketing. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a 2D pocket toolpath and create a 2D adaptive toolpath. Let's carry on with the file from our previous example, and let's create a two-axis pocket operation on the top of our part. Our ultimate goal is to get into multi-axis positioning, but files take time to get to that point. The example that we're using here is a great example of how using a multi-axis machine can speed up production. But a lot of the operations can be done on a traditional vertical milling center with only three axes. The outside profile, which we've already taken a look at, as well as some of the pocketing and drilling operations from the top. So let's take a look at creating some drilling toolpaths in these holes, and we need to make a decision as to whether or not we want to do those before or after we create a pocket. So usually that decision comes based on the geometry, whether or not you're just doing a through hole, or if you're going to be tapping. In this case, since we are tapping, I want to get started by doing a pocket operation. The type of pocket operation you decide depends again on the geometry. If we select 2D pocket and select this face area here, you'll notice that on the screen, it doesn't select the holes for us. It selects the outside and inside, but it omits the holes, which is exactly what we want to do. We want it to machine directly over the holes because that's solid area that hasn't been machined yet. We can take into account rest machining. However, the part originally was already face down to the top and our 3D adaptive toolpath never dropped into this pocket. We only use it to come in from the outside and really work on the outside geometry. So in this case, rest machining really won't provide any additional benefit for us. I do want to change the tool, however, because the half inch tool is going to be a little bit too large to fit in between these edges. So I'm going to go into my cloud multi-axis tool library and select tool number six, which is a 3 8 flat end mill. Then I want to go into my height section and just ensure that the bottom height is my selected contour. In the passes section, I want to turn off stock to leave because I want this to be both roughing and finishing operation. I'm going to turn on finishing passes and notice that the step over comes in as 0 0.0375. This is based on the diameter of the tool. The maximum step over amount, and we have some additional options such as using a morphed spiral. I'm going to turn that on. However, there's not a lot of room inside this pocket geometry. There's also an option to allow for step over cusps. So when we're turning this on and we're programming to flat faces, if the tool has a radius corner, then it can create things like scallops and this can adjust the offset and the way things move over. But since we're dealing with a flat square tool, we don't really have to worry about it as much. The pocket's not deep enough for us to worry about multiple depths. And since we're not doing any stock to leave, we can just double check our linking parameters ensure that we have a helical entry ramp and say OK. So this operation comes in in three different areas. So you'll notice that the entry and exit points are moving over to these areas simply based on the geometry. Now, if we were to do this with, say, a 2D adaptive clearing toolpath in the same area using the same 3 8 tool, the toolpath would look slightly different. The adaptive clearing helps keep a consistent chip load on the tool. So you'll notice that we have one entry and one exit, and we have these small movements as it's going down through these areas. So in many cases, the adaptive toolpaths will be able to run a lot faster and keep that consistent load on the tool. We do want to make sure that we come in and we turn off stock to leave because we will be using this as a finishing toolpath. Also note, based on the geometry, we could include slot clearing. However, in this case, we're going to say, okay, and we're going to continue with the 2D adaptive clearing toolpath. So I'm going to right click on pocket and I'm going to delete that. Next, I'm going to go into my setup two and I want to simulate all the operations so far. I'm going to skip past the 3D adaptive and skip past the external contour. Then I want to play through my 2D adaptive. So again, it is omitting the holes and it's working through and it's clearing all the geometry out in this pocket. So this means we now are down to the top section where our holes will start. So we can spot and we can drill and we can tap these areas. From here, let's make sure that we save the file before we move on to the next step. Mm -hmm. 